Hey y'all, I'm Zion, and as your unofficial South Side of the Kingdom cousin, get ready to be refreshed, delivered from bondage, laugh, freed from shame and guilt, and get invited to the cookout. I'm going to give you the tools on how to become free in Zion through Christ, of course. Get ready for the first episode. Ah, I'm so excited. All right, guys, that was so cringy and like so super rehearsed. And I'm so sorry for that. But I made that up and I really wanted to share that with you guys because I was excited. But as time goes on, I'm going to get better. I promise. I'm going to get better on how I deliver that. <laughs> um, Sorry if you hear the mic moving. So I don't know if you're watching the audio or if you are watching the video or both. But I am just, first of all, y'all know me. I love me a cozy little blanket, okay? So we got on just a little cozy fit just to get the point done, the job done. And I am excited to be here. So if you are tuned in or if you are watching this, shout out to you because, baby, what it took to get here. Like, I'm just excited if it's only one listener. I mean, I hope it's not just one listener, but you know what I'm saying. <laughs> Humble me real quick, Lord. Um. So anyways, I have my notes here because I'm new to this, not true to this. I'm trying to get true to this. And I have my biblioteca. Nah, it's my Bible. I don't know why I call it that, but it's cute to say. Anyways, so um, we're just going to hop right on into it. This is episode one. And as you can see, if you're watching the video, it is evident that there is something different. Um, if you don't know me or didn't have me on YouTube or didn't follow me on Instagram, you would not know that I had locks for 24 years. Yes, guys, 24 years. So I'm 26 now. Wait, no, how old am I? I'm 26. Okay. And I just cut my locks off after having them for 24 years in March. It is currently June. So the journey is very fresh and I am loving every single minute of it. For, I'm telling you, like I've done braids, I did the wigs, I did the curls, you know, but I know everyone's asking like, why did she cut her locks? I'm so confused. Um. So yeah, we're going to hop right on into it because this is definitely a whole story. It wasn't just because, well, part of it is, of course, because I wanted to just start my own journey. I wanted to, um, locks was definitely a journey that was started for me when I was two. Clearly I had no choice, um, but I wanted to start my own journey, but it is so much deeper than that. And we're going to dive in. We're going to talk about a few different topics today. Um, I'm like fighting the thought of starting this over because I'm such a perfectionist. I'm like, no, I, in my head, I'm like, no, I could have said this better. I could have did this better, but we're just going to keep going. And this is showing growth because I would have probably did this like 20 times because I'm still cringing the way I did the um <laughs> the way I did the intro. <laughs> but it's okay. So we're gonna grab a little mocky mock, a little mocktail. This is literally apple juice in a wine glass. But you know your girl is quench her her thirst needs to be quenched. So we're gonna have a little sippy sip. So grab a snack, grab a little mocktail or whatever you're whatever you like to do. Um and let's enjoy. A little ASMR. <laughs> um, anyways, so yeah, so why I cut my locks? Girl, child, boy, whoever's listening. So I got saved, y'all. Like, I'm like saved, saved. Like, I'm like saved, saved. Like, I'm like a Proverbs 31 woman of God. Like, it's of giving a virtuous woman. Like, oh my God. Um... But yeah, hold on. Let me make sure this. Let me make sure this is still recording. Okay, it's still recording. The closest scary because I was about to freak out. Um. Okay, guys, let's be let's calm it down and be so for real. So, I was battling a lot mentally that nobody knew. Like my family didn't know. My my loved ones didn't know. My boyfriend didn't know. Um, it was a lot of childhood trauma. It was a lot of things. I was like such a crazy, like I was such a big secret holder. Um, so it was things 
that I just was not free from. It was so much bondage in my mind, so many gruesome memories and thoughts and just things that I just kept, like it became a part of me to the point where I was suffering really, really, really bad with anxiety. Um, and after a while I was just like, oh, this is just me. Like, I'm just an anxious person. Like, um, let me bring the mic up. Um, I'm just an anxious person. Like, this is just my personality. Like, I just be having anxiety. Like I, I remember, you know, having anxiety when I was a kid and all of this stuff. And like, that's not okay. Like when I realized like that is not of God. And at one point um, in 2020, it was like my lowest point guys. Like y'all, like I know we cousins, but like we, I gotta be real. Like I was contemplating checking into a mental hospital because the way my thoughts were so intrusive oh father god the way my thoughts were so intrusive thank you jesus thank you god thank you god for deliverance mm. wow i feel the lord in this moment oh god oh god <laughs> I was like, there has to, like, I need some type of relief. It was to the point, guys, where I had to take, I, like, got, I found, like, this medication, like, for, um, like, mental, like, you know. And it literally didn't do anything but make things worse because I would, I took, I took it maybe, like, three times. So I, I forgot exactly. I think it was called, like, Klonopan. Um, I took it, and it literally gave me more anxiety. It just made me feel, like, calm anxiety. Um, and then I would drink wine with it. Crazy mix, but I did it. Um, because I'm like, okay, the wine is going to calm me down and like the medicine. Oh, thank you, God, for deliverance. I'm sorry. I'm just like reliving the moment. And I'm just, God, I thank you, Lord. I'm sorry, y'all. This is just a real, a real time moment. And I just want to encourage you. I just truly want to encourage you. If this is you right now, if this is something that you're going through right now and you're contemplating suicide or you're contemplating checking into a mental hospital or you're contemplating just is this life worth it? There is no other option for me. This is just me. And you're settled in that depression or you're settled in that anxiety or you're settled in that quote unquote mental health issue because we're not claiming none of that. The blood of Jesus over your whole life, like. I pray that the Lord gives you a true revelation of who he is. And I'm not even trying to be super preachy or like Pastor Zai, because I definitely can be. But that stuff is real, y'all. Like, it's really, really, really real. And I'm just diving straight into the episode because we don't got time to, like, beat around the bush. So long story short, um, I was facing that, right? And lo and behold, those thoughts were not my thoughts. Those were thoughts of demons in my head. Sidebar, <laughs> warning, warning. Yes, it's getting intense. Those were demons, y'all, in my head. So know that if you're having intrusive thoughts, those thoughts are not your thoughts. That is a, that, oh, Jesus, who? you about to give me in my bag because... They thought they had me, like they had me all the way messed up. Like you really, you thought I was feeling you like what? No. So, um, that started the journey of me getting deliverance. So when I started going to church, it started in like 2020, I would watch Sarah Jake's, um, church, like her one, uh, one ministry or whatever, on YouTube and it was great. And I was like, you know, getting revelation and everything, but it was like on and off, on and off because in between guys, I was burning sage. I had one crystal. My dad gave me this crystal cause he's like Rastafarian. So he's into that. Well, he was into that. And that's going to be another story for another episode. Thanks be to sweet baby Jesus. Um, I had to tell him the truth about that. So anyways, I was into sage. I was into ultimately witchcraft. Like, people think that that is not witchcraft. It is literally witchcraft, guys. Like, I was into it. So it's not like I'm just shunning the people that are into it, babe. Like, I thought that was the way. Like, I'm like, 
okay, I'm feeling anxiety. Like something's off. Like, let me clean the bad energy. Like, let me burn this sage. Jesus. Thank you, God. Let me burn this sage. Um, let me, let me meditate. Let me go and let me do yoga. I mean, deep meditation to where like I fell asleep. Oh my God. Deep meditation, y'all. Even the yoga, even the yoga poses are stances of demons. Like y'all, like when I told y'all, I did not come to play with this content, with this podcast. Like, nah, we're not doing none of that. So the blood of Jesus over this whole podcast right now, um, and over everyone that's listening to this podcast, um, and I just have to keep saying that because as I'm talking, as I'm talking, fear is trying to come against me. And that's a whole dub. Like that is a whole, that is null and void. So I'm going to keep on talking and I'm going to keep being obedient to what God is pouring on my heart. I don't really have notes. I just ask the Lord to use me. As soon as I press play, Lord, use me. So that's what's happening. So I know I'm taking a long time to tell the story, but this is just is what it is. And I'm going to make sure it's still recording. So hold on. <laughs> Let me see. Yes, it is still recording. We are 11 minutes in. <laughs> oh my gosh. So, um, yeah, the enemy thought he had me, but Jesus said you are mine, period. So I didn't realize that that was what it was because that I feel like that's the majority of the world because the enemy tries to make it look so glorified and so aesthetic, if I'm being completely honest. It was like, oh, let me put on my little yoga clothes, do yoga, go to the park, do my little stretches. Oh, I'm so like aesthetic and like burning my sage. I'm so spiritual and oh my God, yes. Like I'm just so one with myself. Girl, <laughs> girl, you was one with the demons. No, babe, no. I need to be one with God. And the thing is, I was playing worship music as I was burning sage y'all because I'm I'm so g'd in my head like yeah this is the way the truth for the life and it wasn't oh my gosh it was not guys it was not oh man so anyways my dad he's Rastafarian I don't know if any of you guys are Rastafarian but he always would tell me oh you're a Rasta princess your hair is your strength your hair is power um, all of this stuff, right? And I never understood it because I never felt like I identified with that culture. I always felt like I knew there was a God, but in my mind, I, I never really wanted to tap into God because I'm like, I can't have fun no more. Like if I really get like churchy, like girl, I can't smoke my hookah. I can't drink. I can't have fun. Like I can't be outside. And I'm thinking, being outside and doing all of those things is fun and is lit when lo and behold, I was running, I was running from my problems. Those, that thing I was trying to fill voids with to the point where like, I'm sorry, y'all, this, this is getting like way off topic, but I'm just, I'm just going how the Lord is leading me. Um, to the point where I was like low key seeking attention, y'all. Like I was seeking attention. I was going outside to be seen. If I'm being completely honest, like we are free in Zion. So we, let's talk about it. Like, let's talk about it. So my hair was attached. The locks were attached. And this is nothing against anybody has lock, that has locks. This was my conviction. This is my journey. This is my story. Um, You know, obviously when you lock your hair, uh, sorry, I just hit the mic if you guys heard that. Um, when you lock your hair, sometimes people say I'm locking in the experience. So you carry that with you. So through childhood trauma, through anxiety, through depression, through fear, through demon, through all of these things, through abuse, like guys, I was verbally and physically abused as a child, um, over and over and over. Um, and that's something that I didn't, I felt, I felt ashamed of. Like, I didn't want to tell my friends. I didn't want to tell my family. I didn't want to tell nobody because I'm like, girl, you look, you look crazy. Like you look, I don't know. Like, I don't even know what I thought I looked like, but that's what I'm saying. Like, that's the fear that comes from the enemy. So anyways, I was carrying that with me, with my locks on my head. Like I'm, I've seen, like, I watch videos like from the past or whatever, when I like was in the world and stuff and I'm like yo I feel so bad for that girl like wow like she was in so much bondage like she was in prison in her mind in her body like oh my gosh y'all this 
I'm excited for this podcast because it's so much layers I want to unfold, not only with myself, but with you guys. Like, I want to have special, I'm going to have special guests. I'm going to figure out some way, somehow to have people here in person so we could, you know, where two or three are gathered, he is in the midst. So he, we can vibe off of the vibe of God. Like, you know what I'm saying? The presence of God. So I'm trusting him for it. Um, well, I'm sorry. Tying back to why I cut my hair, God, y'all, because I'm just, I'm excited, y'all. Like, y'all don't understand. Like, the Lord told me to make this podcast a year ago, and it just wasn't my time. And now it is. Period. Like, and now it is. But now it is. But now it was not my time, but now it is. So that's the word for you. That's the word for you. It was not my time, but now it is. <laughs> like, that's crazy. But anyways, um, so I would like have these thoughts about cutting my hair all the time, right? And then some, like I've even gotten prophecy um, about cutting my hair and like seeing me with lo- without locks and stuff like that. I started visioning myself without locks and... I'm like, okay, where is all of this coming from? And the enemy had me all messed up because he was like, you're going to be ugly. Like, I just kept feeling like I'm going to be so ugly. And like, my hair texture was just going to be like crazy. And like, and what is crazy hair texture? All hair texture is great hair texture because it's hair at the end of the day. So we're thankful for hair. Um... But yeah, I'm like, oh God, like, what would I look like with a short haircut? I'm like, hey, maybe if I comb it out and, you know, just have long hair and whatever. And then I'm like, but it's still the same hair. That's why I didn't just comb the locks out. It's still the same dead hair that you're holding on to, the same dead weight that you're holding on to. So hold on, I got to take a sip. The same dead hair that you are holding on to. Sorry, y'all. Keep checking it to make sure it's recording because I'm... I'm new to this, not true to this, but I'll be true to this soon. And so I call it holy boldness because as women, I've had long hair my whole life. Like, I don't know what I look like with straight hair, obviously, until now. I don't know what I look like with braids with straight hair and curls and all of these things. So it was literally like it became to the point where I don't care what I look like. I need to be free. Like, y'all, it gets deeper. We're going to a deeper level. It was to the point where I was in so much bondage, had soul ties. Yes, soul ties is a real thing. Soul ties is when you have sexual intercourse with someone and your souls, you become one. That's why sex is so powerful, y'all. Sex is so powerful because when you have sex with somebody, y'all become one. So the th- the demons that they are battling, you are now battling. The fight, the spiritual warfare they're fighting, the torment in the mind, you are now fighting. So imagine having however many partners you have. Like say, like some people have 30. Like let's just be real. Some people have 20. Some people have 10. Some people have five. So you're going through essentially what all of those people are going through. So I had to literally break any soul tie that I may have had. Like even to the, even, even to the, even to my boyfriend's soul tie, like let's reconnect. Like, you know what I'm saying? Whatever the past, like let's reconnect. Um, when, you know, whatever. So I, girl, I keep saying girl, cause just in case a guy is watching this, But hun, cousin, it was so many demonic portals open sexually and just spiritually. Like, y'all, I had so much sexual dysfunction. Like, like, it was just, we gonna get into that. But literally, y'all, the enemy was raping me in my sleep. And I know that sounds like, okay, girl, let me turn this podcast off. But people think having sex dreams and like feeling like you're having sex in your dream and feeling like you're climaxing or whatever that is, it's like, oh yeah, it's just cause I'm freaky. I'm like thinking I'm like, I'm like corny or like sexual or whatever. 
No, babe, that is a demon. That is a demon. Jesus, thank you for freedom. Thank you for deliverance. Thank you for healing. Lord, I thank you. That is a demon called succubus and incubus. And that they are having sex with you in your sleep. And it is a spiritual spouse. Oh, God. Y'all about to have me speaking in tongue. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Father, for freedom. For freedom, Jesus. And when I tell you I was being tormented every night, multiple times a night, it was so, it was the most uncomfortable, craziest time, season, oh my God, of my life. And those portals are open through sex. It's open through watching porn. It's open through masturbation. It's open through um, just like that type of stuff. So there's a bunch of different things, obviously, that can attack you from, you know, different things. But that is specifically a sexual, spiritual spouse. And it is absolutely the grossest, gruesomest thing in the world. And I do not wish that on my worst enemy. Well, honestly, I only have one enemy. And y'all already know who that is. Because, yeah, I don't hate nobody on the face of this earth. I don't care from the past. Like, I'm not worried about none of that like i don't care i'm good i am new in christ so huh you didn't diss me you diss the old body yeah <laughs> that was mad at all. i said yeah <laughs> no but anyways um all seriousness guys i i think i admitted this on my t tuesday so if you know if you followed my brand i have a plant-based feminine hygiene brand here's a little plug you know um, I would go live on Tuesdays to kind of talk about relationship with God and just different topics of like healing and, you know, freedom with my self-care junkies. That's what I call my, my customers. Um, and we've shared tears, testimonies, all of that good stuff. Right. So I was vulnerable and open and I told them like, you know, I felt comfort in watching porn and masturbation because it was like, this release it was like this freedom it was like i feel like i could be myself and not to say i was addicted but i don't know it was like this this like peace i'm just gonna be honest that came with it because obviously i i'm trying to find peace and i just don't know how like i'm burning sage i'm doing all of these things right um and nothing against people that are that do that right now but I just want you to know that there will be nothing else in this world that will suffice. There was be there will be nothing else that will fill that void. So pretty much, porn is very demonic. So you're thinking you're just watching somebody have sex when you're masturbating to porn. You are essentially having sex with that person and making a soul tie. And that person that's recording the porn, they have so many demons dwelling in them. So now, and in all of the sexual drugs that they're on, because that's not real like they're first of all a lot of them don't want to be there let's talk about it um a lot of them are being forced to do that a lot of them are on sex drugs to 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 perform these hypersexual things that make you think is real life and it is not oh my god i can't even believe that i'm saying all of this stuff like this is truly 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 holy boldness because this is crazy um but let's talk about it so Oh, I feel so good just like, just saying this, like, thank you, God. This just feels really good. And I just, I don't know who's watching this, but I love you already. Like, I'm just like, we cousins, we cousins, like, it's lit. Like, we having a, a personal conversation. Um, I'm sorry, I'm like so hunched over, but like, I don't even care, guys, because we comfortable. But, um, yeah, so that was tied into me... And what I was experiencing. So thank you, Jesus. Thank you, sweet baby Jesus, for um, so this woman I call my spiritual my spiritual mother, her name is Diamond. Shout out to you, girl. She introduced me to her church, the Tabernacle of Prayer and Revival. It is in Dobbs Ferry, New York. So if you need deliverance, baby, uh, my pastor is a super prophet. Oh no, y'all. Let me make sure the audio is still going. Hold on. 
the blood of Jesus. Ah, it's still going. We love it here. Um, he's a super prophet, right? So he will tell you what you ate for dinner last night. And no, it is not. It is not the same as a medium. It is not the same as a palm reader. It is not the same as um whatever fortune telling. No, that is. So, okay, the difference from being a prophet and a fortune teller and all of that stuff, right? It's a thin line. The spiritual world is a thin line. One, you can, you, it's the same information, but from a different source. So palm readers and all of that, they're getting their information from a different source. Let's just say that. And prophets, they get their information from God. So it's a very thin, thin, thin line. And and I got that confused because I was into that. Like I was into um, I never got my palm read. I don't I don't think, but I would get information from a different source. Absolutely, and I'm gonna be real about that. Um, but thank you God for deliverance. So, anyways, child, when I tell you, I have had to get deliverance so many times, not just from things that I was into, but things from my gener like generationally that I had to break, like, um, stuff from my father's generation, my mother's generation, my grandparents, sixth generation, like bloodline generational curses. I had to be the curse breaker in my, in my family. And that is a heavy burden to carry, but it is so worth it. It is so worth the sacrifice. So I had to get like, literally demons were called like, I don't, I love her. I don't want to leave. No, she's mine. Like, babe, no, 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 no. The enemy thought he had me, but Jesus said he's mine. Heavy on it because absolutely not. Are you, are you bugging? Like I'm from New York. Like they must not know I'm from New York. Like I will stomp you out with a pair of Tim's while I'm eating the bacon, egg and cheese. <laughs> no, I don't even eat bacon, but you know, that's funny. Um, but yeah, guys, so long story shorter, I came to the realization that I was, I was just, it was so many attacks. It was like, I was taking 10 steps, for, two steps forward and 10 steps back every time of my deliverance. And then the Lord told me that I had a choice to make and that involved cutting my hair because it was like, it was like I was being pulled in both directions. It was like a tug of war because I would get cleaned and get filthy again, get cleaned and get filthy again, because essentially I'm still carrying all of this stuff. And as I'm closing, I had to, I had to repent y'all. I had to repent. Can, you can't just stop burning stage. Like you have to repent. You have to ask God to close those demonic portals. Oh, thank you, Jesus. You have to ask God to close those demonic portals. Oh Lord. I thank you, father. I thank you, Jesus. You have to ask God to close those demonic portals. Oh, Father, I thank you. And I just pray that literally anybody that's listening to this finds freedom and healing and, and, and is set free. Jesus, like, I don't want what I experienced for anybody. And then, you know, I literally, um, I literally asked the Lord, I'm like, why did I have to go through so much? pain in life like people think because i'm like oh well, she just is so nice oh she's pretty oh like she's so perfect like she's like such a business owner and like she's so like oh she you know whatever babe like i went through a lot and i asked the lord i'm like why why me why why did you put me through all of that you could have just showed me who you were and that was it right and he said I had, you had to go through it so that others don't have to. You had to be the sacrificial lamb because what is going to come out of your mouth are going to set, oh God, thank you, Jesus. You are going to set the captive free. You are going to set the captive free. Well, the Lord said you had to go through all of that because you have to set the captives free. So. I say all of that to say, to tie this back into, let's, you know, you need scripture. I'm gonna give you scripture. Let's do it. Um, and I don't know why I always feel like to make this announcement, like, oh, you know, before I read scripture, not to be so churchy, like girl, we church in it. All right. Cause we need Jesus. Okay. So let's do it. So Acts, ouch, Acts 16 verse 25 
it's so crazy because the Lord had me read this at like two o'clock in the morning. And then I had a whole revelation about it to the point where I had to tell my boyfriend, I was like, babe, like I got to read this to you. And I told him my revelation and he's over here falling asleep. Cause once again, it's two o'clock in the morning <laughs> and I had a whole sermon for him all the, over the phone. Like it was, it was just such a great revelation that I had. While I was at church the next day, y'all, my pastor literally preached. That was his whole message. Acts chapter 16, verse 25. My mind was blown. Then I just went to a Naomi Rain concert yesterday. Why is she based a song that turned the whole crowd out off of, off of this verse? It's called Paul and Silas. Literally, you can go listen to it. I'm like, yo, this is crazy. Like, this is all happening within one week. And then the Lord told me I had to film this podcast today. And I'm like, no, it has to be perfect. It has to be. He's like, film, girl. So anyways, I'm going to read the scripture to you guys. So it's Acts verse 16. I mean, chapter 16, verse 25. So about... Midnight, Paul and Silas were praying and singing hymns to God, and the other prisoners were listening to them. Suddenly, hey, suddenly, suddenly, y'all, oh, Jesus, there was a violent earthquake that the foundations of the earth were shaken. At once, all the prisoners' doors flew open and everyone's chains came loose. The jailer woke up, and when he saw the prisoners' door open he drew his sword and was about to kill himself because he thought the prisoners had escaped but paul shouted don't harm yourself we are here right so i am reading from the niv translation so anyways look at me let me <laughs> giving yeah but all seriousness y'all i'm sorry i'm i'm crazy guys as y'all can see but all seriousness y'all This scripture spoke to me so deeply because although Paul and Silas were in prison, they were in bondage. They were in captivity. They still gave all glory to God. They still, they still opened up their mouths and praised the Lord through being in bondage. So that's what I had to do, y'all. Like, I literally... It was a time where I had to cut off, like I had to call my friends, call my boyfriend, call everybody and say, listen, y'all, I have nothing. I don't have a laugh. I don't have a joke. I don't have a, a good time. I have nothing to give, guys. I have to quiet myself and I have to get to God. And this is before I was even saved, saved. Like the, I didn't know what I was doing, but I just kept hearing the word isolation. Isolate yourself. I need to get you alone. He had to get me alone, y'all. He had to get me alone, y'all. I was in prison. He had to get me alone, y'all. I was in bondage. He had to get me alone, y'all. So he said, I called everybody. I cried every day. All I did was watch sermons pray, read my Bible. And that's when I had, um, gotten to therapy. Like I was, um, but the Lord had to cut that off because, um, we'll get into that another episode, but I was in therapy because I was just child. I signed up for therapy at like three o'clock in the morning one day because I was going through it. Um, but anyways, so that was all I ate, sleep, slept and drank was God and still do and do. Um, but no, so I'm just going to go back to the scripture. So suddenly there was such a violent earthquake that the foundations of the prison were shaken. So Jesus, when the earthquake came, the prison doors flew open and their chains were loose, right? So sometimes in life, it feels like we are in bondage. We are in prison, right? But the earthquake, it, it had to be an earthquake. Your life had to get shaken up. You had to go through what you went through. You had to literally experience a violent earthquake so you can see God move. You can see the chain suddenly, immediately be broken. You could see God moves when suddenly the doors fly open. You can see God move when suddenly you are no longer in bondage because you praised your way through the pain because you, and even when it looks like, like there is no way, like I am literally chained. I'm literally behind bars. I am literally in a cell. How? When your faith 
oh God, when your faith is made known, that can make mountains move, y'all. And I'm, I promise you, like, I'm going to just say it. I'm not trying to be all preachy and churchy, but listen, y'all, listen when I tell you, there is nothing too hard for God. I am literally a testament of it. There is nothing in this world too hard for God. Like, like, like cousin, there is nothing. And I am not perfect. I have done some things. I have said some things. I have, you know what I'm saying? But when I got baptized, what was it? July, 2022. And the Lord told me that I was a prophet and that I have to speak his word. I have literally been dedicated to that. Like I have literally been dedicated to freeing people from giving them a message from the Lord. So now the Lord is using me to give messages to random people. Like I've literally been in the gynecologist's office, my waitress at a restaurant, my hairstylist at a hair salon. Like, and I mean, tears tears of confirmation they were this close they were on the brink of suicide they were on the brink of depress like depression they just lost a baby they like literally like the way the lord has been using me i am extremely extremely grateful and it's not because i'm special it's not because i dress nice it's not because i'm you know because i'm pretty it's not because any of that stuff it's just my obedience like I am dedicated to being obedient to what God is saying. So right now, this is me being super, super vulnerable. Like y'all don't even, y'all don't understand. Like when I tell you I was a secret keeper. So I always wanted to make sure everybody was good. If I was feeling away, if I was sad, if I was depressed as a kid, I would not say nothing. I had so much anxiety as a kid. Like sometimes I couldn't even eat. Like I just, I felt full all the time because I, I was like eating anxiety, like, Oh my God, like it was just so bad. And I didn't know what it was a word for it. I didn't know, I didn't know what it was. I just thought it was me. And even as an adult, I just thought it was me. Um, but the Lord said, come try me. You, you've tried you. You've tried you. You've tried it your way, but come try me. Just try it out. And you know, we love it here. So <laughs> I haven't left since. Like I didn't, you know, I'm addicted and I just can't get enough. <laughs> <laughs> I'm sorry, y'all. I'm mad ghetto. Um, I keep checking the time because, you know. But I don't want to make this episode too long. So we're going to just sum it up. And I just feel like to pray for just, you know, everybody under, under the sound of my voice. Lord, I just pray that you give them a true revelation of who you are. Not for what other people say you are or what other who what other, what other people say you can do. I pray that they don't put you in a box. I pray that they see that you are omnipresent. You are always here. You are a provider. You are a healer. You are a deliverer. You are our perfect peace, our comfort, our redeemer. You are our friend. You are our Abba, our father. You protect us. You guide us into all truth. So I pray that everyone under the sound of my voice experiences your perfect peace. Father God, I thank you for this podcast. I thank you for Free and Zion. I thank you that this message touched whoever's listening to them. I'm, I'm thankful that they got to this part of the episode. And I, I pray that this is not just an episode. This is an exchange. This is an encounter. I pray that this is not just a podcast. I pray that this is not just an episode. I pray that this is not just a YouTube video or whatever, whatever platform that they are watching this on. I pray that this is not just another, oh yeah, that's just another one of those. So I thank you, Lord, for what you are going to do in them and through them and through me for them. So may I decrease so you might increase, Lord. Have your way. In Jesus' mighty name, I pray, amen. And I just want to say, if you feel led to repent from anything that you may have done, any anything, any doors you may have opened, any soul ties you may have created, any, um, or if you feel like, dang, I really want to try this Jesus thing out. Maybe it's not as boring as everyone makes it seem. Maybe it's actually what I didn't know that I actually needed or the best thing that could ever happen to me, then I just ask that you just, you know, say with me, Father God, 
Repeat after me. Father God, I receive you as my Lord and Savior. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Reveal yourself to me. Fill every area in my life that I may be searching but cannot find. But now I will find you. In Jesus' name, we pray. Amen. So I love you guys. Um, I'm thankful. And I will see you guys in the next episode of Free in Zion. Ah! <laughs> Peace. <laughs>